Hi, my name is Erica Casada York. I am a certified nurse midwife at Professional Gynecological Services in Brooklyn, New York. We're talking today about IUDs, how to choose an IUD, what it's like to have an IUD. This is one of a series of videos, and in this video, we're going to be talking about hormonal IUDs. There's kind of a little family of hormonal IUDs, and I'll talk a little bit about what they're like, how they work, possible side effects, so that if you are considering using one of these, take Note. So there are several different brands of hormonal IUDs, but they are very similar to each other. All of these are little plastic T-shaped devices that go inside the uterus. They're inserted just in the clinic, in a regular visit, in a regular GYN office. And they all have a very, very small amount of a progestin hormone called levonorgestrel, and it releases low amounts of this over time over the life of the IUD itself. Because it has this slowly, slowly, slowly releasing hormone, it's actually a very low dose of hormone that you're receiving over time. And in fact, it's one of the lowest hormone dose methods that you can use. Some brands of the hormonal IUD include Mirena, which is probably the most commonly used in the United States, Lyleta, Kylina. All of these are very similar to each other, but they have slight differences. Some of them may Maybe are just a millimeter or two smaller. Some of them have a slightly smaller kind of dose of hormone built up into it, so they need to be replaced more frequently, but they all work in basically the same way. With this levonorgestrel hormone that's just slowly, slowly, slowly released over time, it does a few things in order to achieve you not getting pregnant. One of those is that it actually causes the cervix to release mucousy discharge that is very difficult for sperm to swim through. So it's difficult for sperm in the first place to get inside the uterus. Those few that maybe do are now facing uterine environment that is not really very healthy for sperm. Typically, if you're not using any kind of birth control at all, around the time of ovulation, the uterus itself and the fallopian tubes themselves become very happy to nourish and to accept the sperm. There's lots of sugar and electrolytes kind of in the discharge and in the fluid that's helping them stay alive. The pH that's in that fluid is very friendly to sperm. And at times when you are not ovulating, that environment is not so friendly to sperm themselves. And that's what we're gonna have when someone has a hormonal IUD, is that it's very, very difficult for sperm to pass through this environment, get all the way up to one of the tubes, and actually fertilize an egg. In some people, they're so sensitive to the amount of hormone that they're not actually even gonna fully ovulate, which which pretty clearly also adds to how effective this IUD is. As a method, the hormonal IUD is more than 99% effective. So it's as effective as getting your tubes tied, but it is completely, completely reversible. Even though this is a hormonal method, your fertility does come back as soon as we remove the IUD to whatever it would have been before. You don't have any sort of recovery time or, oh, I need to wait a few weeks or anything like that. Your body adjusts very quickly once that IUD is no longer in place. Because there is a small dose of hormones, there are a few side effects that I tell people to look out for with the hormonal IUD. The most common one, and I think by far the most dramatic one, is that most people experience very big changes in their period. It's very, very, very common not to have a period at all during the time that you have this IUD in place. And some people actually use this IUD as a method of suppressing their periods altogether for whatever reason they may have to do that. This is completely normal. It's not dangerous. You're not building up and building up and building up all these periods and then at the end of five years we take the IUD out and all the periods are going to come out at once. That lining is just never building up in the uterus because that dose of hormones is preventing that lining from building up. And if the lining is not building up, there's nothing that needs to flush out. And so that's why it's so common not to have a period. It's also very common. Many people get some bleeding just a few times a year. Unfortunately, it can be pretty irregular and hard to predict when that might happen, but it tends to be much more spaced out, again only a few times a year, and any bleeding that you do have tends to be much lighter, lighter in terms of quantity, and also lighter in terms of cramps and pain, and other period-related symptoms like bloating, breast tenderness, 
cravings, back pain, things like that that might go along with having your period, those symptoms can be reduced with the use of this kind of IUD. Less common, but still a possibility, other hormonal side effects such as weight changes that could be going up some pounds, that could be going down some pounds. It's pretty uncommon, but I have seen it. Headaches that can come from any method that contains progestin. Skin and hair changes. This tends to be more in the line of being more prone to acne breakouts. For some people, hair changes could be more prone to having hair falling out, similar to after you've had a baby, that there tends to be a little bit of hair loss that comes with that. Again, these are things that I don't see very, very frequently. A lot of these are reasons why people would choose to stop using the IUD, which I completely understand. And so I feel pretty confident in saying that I see these side effects quite rarely in my practice. Most people who are coming back to me to check on their IUD are telling me that they're very, very happy with the method. The hormonal IUD lasts for anywhere between three years to seven years, depending on which brand you choose to have. And then at the end of that time, we do consider that it's less effective just because the dose of that hormone is going down and going down and going down. It needs to have a certain active dose in order to be able to protect you against becoming pregnant. At the end of that three year, five year, seven year period, if you want to continue using the IUD, we can take it out and insert a new one in the exact same visit so you don't have to ever have any sort of gap in your birth control. You don't have to use it for a full three years, five years, seven years. You're not signing a contract saying that you promise it's going to stay in this long. If you want to take it out because you're ready to have a baby, you are, have side effects that you don't like, you found a a new birth control that you want to try, any reason whatsoever, we can always remove it sooner than it quote unquote needs to be removed. I'm also going to be talking in a separate video about what the IUD insertion process is like, what it's like to have an IUD and take care of your body while the IUD is there. And I also have another video that I'm doing about the non-hormonal IUD that contains copper. And so if you are interested in choosing an IUD, but you're still kind of deciding, do I want to have this kind or that kind, definitely watch the other videos in the series, please share this with anyone you think would appreciate it. You can always comment below and we would be happy to come and see you in the office if this is a service that you would like to get. Thanks!